The original account runs as follows. On the 26th day of June, 1284, the day of St. John and St. Paul, a piper dressed in many colours led 130 children born in Hamlin to Calvary near Coppen, where they were lost. The rats entered the scene in accounts of the story beginning from the middle of the 16th century. It's reasonable to assume that such accretions to the story resulted from events in history, possibly the Black Death and other such incidents and events. Can the original version of the story then be taken as a genuine historical account? In some sense, it runs counter to normal experience. Children often dance to the sound of music, but they are not frequently led away, never to be seen again. Nevertheless, the account chronicles quite specific times, dates and places. It makes reference to a particular date, the 26th of June, 1284. This coincides with a day on the church calendar, that of the saints St. John and St. Paul. Incidentally, in Shakespeare's play Richard III, Richard uses the oath by Paul, a fact that may reflect his coup on the 26th of June. The account mentions specific places, not only Hamelin, but the destination to which the piper and the children went, referred to as Coppen or Calvary. The name Calvary, of course, reminds us of the Calvary mentioned in the New Testament as the place of the crucifixion of Jesus. But what about Coppen? There is a town not far from Hamlin, to the east, called Coppenbrugge. Is this a coincidence? A fact that we shall come to consider shortly. We should not overlook the religious connotations of the short account we are considering. There is a reference to a saint's day, and there is a reference to Calvary. We shouldn't perhaps jump to the conclusion that the reference is directly to the Calvary of the New Testament, a point we shall come to consider. Nor should we overlook the fact that the setting of the action is in the early summer, and perhaps the celebrations of dancing led by a person in a multicoloured suit might indicate some kind of celebration of this kind, perhaps connected with solar-related practices. Let us now consider the meeting point of two coordinates of time and place, the year 1284 and the location of Koppen assuming this to have some bearing on the name of Koppenbrugge in the vicinity of Hamlin. We now consider the possible role that three brothers played in the story of the Pied Piper and the exodus of the children of Hamlin. The family name of these young noblemen was von Spiegelberg. The eldest was Nikolaus, the middle one, Moritz, and the youngest, Hermann. In 1284, all three were living in their castle, the site of which you may visit today in the town of Koppenbrücke. Stories became current associating the von Spiegelberg brothers with the disappearance of the children of Hamlet. 
Two noted scholars who have done intensive research into the Pied Piper story agree that the von Spiegelberg brothers played a central role in the story. They are Hans Dobertin and Gernot Husam, the curator of the uh, Koppenbrugge Castle Museum. Though both accept the central role of the Spiegelberg brothers, they differ as to where the children were led and the motives of the Spiegelberg brothers in inducing their disappearance. Hans Dobertin has concluded that the von Spiegelberg brothers, particularly Nikolaus, instigated the exile of the children of Hamelin, or possibly their voluntary expatriation to certain colonies on the Baltic coast in what is now Poland or Pomerania. Herr Husam has no sympathy for emigration theories and has a much more simple and literal interpretation of the Hamlin story. He believes that the Pied Piper or an agent of the von Spiegelbergs led the children to a place within walking distance from Hamlin. More precisely, their destination are the rocky heights above Koppenbrücke in, on a location that is now known as the It or Oberberg. Herr Husam became thoroughly convinced of this thesis when he, as the archivist and curator of the museum in Koppenbrugge, discovered a document attesting to the fact that in 1031 the region just referred to was known as the Koppen. Now we come to the question of the motive. In Herr Husam's view, the project of leading the children from Hamlin was to stamp out heathen or pre-Christian practices that used to be celebrated in the rocky heights of the Oberberg. He finds evidence substantiating his view in a recording in a prayer book dating from the end of the 14th century, speaking of the children of Hamlin as those being of both sexes who languished or grew weak at the location to which they were led. Herhuzam understands this as a way of hinting at orgiastic excesses. Herhuzam also understands that the children met a grisly fate perpetrated by the Spiegelberg brothers acting in accordance with the establishment. Possibly some of them were enslaved and taken away to colonize provinces in the east. So the two theories of Dobatin and Herhuzam are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Herhusam elucidates his theory by interpreting the picture of the Pied Piper by Augustin von Mersberg, dating from 1592, pointing to such details as the three stags in the picture and the emblem of the von Spiegelberg brothers was three stags. Unfortunately, there is no space here to discuss the picture, but this will be dealt with on a different clip.